This is lesson 111. Lead states on and off. This is the first lesson on the Pico Pi. And we're just going to control it a little bit today to show how LED lights can turn on and off. There's many things you can do with the Pico Pi robot, from controlling motors to playing music out of the buzzer, following lines with reflection sensors, or detecting the edge of a table. And we've also got a potentiometer over here, and you can see some LCD text on the screen. Well, that, let's not get ahead of ourselves. The first thing we might want to have a look at with the Pico Pi is how to turn an LED on and off. So we're not going to use everything on the Pico Pi. So I'm going to remove some of these wires that we're not going to be using. And that will allow us to see the system with a little bit more clarity. Now, one of the things we're going to need to use when we program the Pico Pi is the Pico Flow USB programmer. Now the USB programmer talks with the microchip on the Pico Pi, and it actually writes the program onto the microchip. So the program that we're going to be writing, we're actually going to use Pico Flow Alpha, which allows us to use flowchart tools. But those flowchart tools then get changed into what's called assembly code for the Pico Pi, so it actually understands what's happening. So let's have a look at some of that assembly code. At the moment, in Pico Flow Alpha, I have a, uh, a program on the screen, a system design, and if I click the assembly code, you'll see it's converted into assembly code. So you don't have to learn assembly code, you can program in flowchart, and later on you can learn assembly code if you want to. But for the moment, let's just erase the program that's on there. And effectively, we can do that by starting with a start tool. And we're going to drag out from one of the nodes and loop it around onto itself. And we'll see the assembly code. There's a bit of code in there for the start tool, but it's pretty much going to reset that. So we need to turn it on. And before it starts spinning around on us, we're going to program, there we go. So the LED is using a two pin cable and it has a resistor in the middle, which is soldered at both ends. You can put some heat shrink over that to uh, make it look a bit nice and make it a bit more durable. And so we've got this two pin cable at the bottom with an orange wire and a brown wire. The way Pico Mini Driver is set up, we've got a bank of pin headers in here each of these rows, there's seven rows in there of three pin headers, and there's one four pin header at the end for um, particular sensors, like an ultrasonic sensor or a rotary encoder. But uh, we only need two pins, so let's have a look at what these pins are and how they work. Okay, so the pins that are closest to the microchip, these pins in here are the signal pins. And those signal pins are controlled by each of the pins that is adjacent to it on the microchip. Now, the second column, so the one down the middle, is uh, all of those middle pins are power, okay? So uh, the middle pins are power, and the outside pins are all ground. What that means for us is we can plug in this uh, LED in one particular way, it will turn on. There it is. If you plug it in the wrong way, it's not going to turn on. And that's just between the power and ground. Now, uh, if I look at that, the middle pin is orange now, and that's saying the orange is power, because LEDs only work in one direction. If I put it in the wrong way, it won't work. But uh, what I want to do is I want to spin it around, and I want to make sure that that orange, pin's, orange wire stays on the center pin. And that means it is now under control of the signal wire, okay? So under control of the microchip. So at the moment, it's providing the right thing 
that is needed to turn that LED on. Well, let's have a look at how to turn it off and how to find the LED states. Okay, so what do we mean by LED states? Well, we're going to create uh, one state to turn on an LED and another one to turn it off, and later on we'll be able to swap between them. But at the moment, you'll see I'm pressing all of the X buttons down there, except for this one on C2. We want to have a tick on C2, and that means we're going to write the code just to change to modify that pin. Let's just try it on at the moment and just test it. I'm going to click Annotate Enable, and in here we'll put C2 High, okay? Because when we make something go high, it's giving a positive voltage. Let's have a look. Okay, C2 high, and I'm going to get the link line. I'm going to draw a new link line, and from the output tool, we're going to wrap around to fix up our program, and you'll see that nothing's highlighted red. Highlights red just to tell you you haven't hooked it up right. So let's program that. C2, pin C2 is high, and if I go program, we'll see... Okay, it's finished programming and it's turned it off. Okay, so if we make pin C2 high, it's going to go off. And let's go back into the tool and we'll explain why that is. Okay, so this is the signal pin is high. And so that means the brown wire is getting a positive voltage. But the center pin is also positive voltage. So we've got two positive voltages going up to our LED. And if we have two positive voltages, then it's not going to turn on. And that's why when we make something high, it's actually going to turn the LED off, which isn't always the case, but it is on the Pico Pi. So LED off is that state that we've found. I've just changed the annotation there. And I'm going to copy and paste that tool and just save it to the designer window. So we can click copy, right click again and paste. There it is. So we've got it saved and that doesn't actually add it to the program. So let's have a look at the program. At the moment we have one output label down here and then it's just going to itself. Go back to output label. So if we change this one, which is called output label, you can give it a name, but that doesn't really matter for what we're doing. But the main thing we want to do is change the annotation to say LED ON, and we're going to make C2, pin C2 low. And if you haven't worked it out, these pins correspond, the pins on the diagram correspond to the pins actually on the microchip. So pin C2 is there, and pin C3 is over there. Okay? So, uh, and you'll notice that up here on the diagram, we've got a little yellow dot. Well, the little yellow dot is the orientation mark, the dot on the microchip. So any of the pins that we change here on the microchip, on the output tool, are the same pins that we modify on the microchip itself. So let's test that. We've made pin C2 go low, and we're expecting that the LED will turn back on. So let's program, and what do we find? The LED turns back on. Yippee! Okay, so that's your first program in how to control the microcontroller. And we've found two LED states. You can copy and paste that. Uh, so we've got the two states, LED on and LED off. Of course, uh, at the moment, it's running the program, LED on. And... Uh, what you need to do now is you need to save your work. And once you have saved it, you also could go ahead and print it onto your printer. Choose your printer there. Print it out and you can hand that into your teacher so that they can mark you on whether you've got the correct states. And always show it to your teacher. Show it, um, show it working on the Pico Pi as well so that they can check everything's okay and that you know what you're doing there. So that's how to turn lead states on and off. Thanks for watching.